Okay, today we're going to be talking about relating graphs to events. And more than typical, I'm going to ask you to do a lot of this on your own. And I'll just explain a few things, but a lot of it I want you to really think individually about the problem. So, we're going to be looking at a graph. And just in this particular example, I will help you work this one out. But I'm asking you, what's going on in each section of the graph? So I've even been so nice and I've labeled it. There's five different sections that are happening here. Really important whenever you're trying to figure out what graphs are saying, you need to look at the axes and see what's happening. So here we are relating speed to time. Okay, so I'm going to look at each of these sections. So it looks like at the very beginning they are not moving. But then it looks like in section one they slowly increase the speed. Okay, so that's happening in section one. They're not moving at first, but then they get a slow increase on the speed. So maybe something like they are, you know, just starting to pull out of a driveway or something like that. Okay, if they're in a car, I'm just making a guess. Section two, it looks like they pick up their pace rapidly. So speed increases more rapidly. And then when we're looking at section three, a lot of people get confused here because it's flat and they think they aren't moving at all. But because this is relating speed and not distance, they are moving. The whole time they're maintaining a steady speed and it's like the fastest speed they go the whole time. So they like are keeping a fast, steady speed here. Okay, so kind of what's going on in that graph. And in section four, you know, maybe they're seeing that they're going to be near a red light or something like that, and they just start to slow down. Okay, so here they start to slow down. Just, you know, slowly slow down. And then in section five, right here, it looks like they're slowing down quite quickly. So they slow, and then eventually they come to a stop. So I want you to just be able to like look at a graph and kind of see what's going on and kind of like I was doing when I had like, oh, maybe there's a red light here or, you know, maybe they got behind a bus or they're on the highway. Kind of think about what might be going on that's in real life for it. Okay, so this one. Here is a day's trip to school and you're comparing your distance from home and your time. So I kind of, I want you to try this graph on your own. Sketch it. And then come back and just see if it's what I've labeled on here at all. Okay, you can see that I magically worked in no time. But here we've got, at the very beginning, I hope you put something like walking to the bus stop. And then the next flat section, they are waiting for the bus. Then they start to ride the bus. Now they're at school. Okay, now they're riding the bus home. They get off the bus, they probably hang out with friends for a couple moments, and then they walk home. Okay, so something like that, something realistic that would be going on. Okay, this one's a lot of fun. I'm not going to explain this to you. But here we go. Prison escape. Okay, so the two variables I'm comparing here are the time and the distance from the cell. Your task is to come up with a good story for this and be prepared to share it in class tomorrow. Okay. All right, now here is another graph. It could mean anything. I want you to get creative, and I'd like you to come up with your own title and axes to represent this graph. And again, I'm going to ask that you share it in class tomorrow. So especially if you don't share with the first story, I'd like you to be able to share this one. So be prepared. We'll be putting these graphs up. You'll get to talk about them. OK. Um, and then I've got two tasks, two more tasks that I want you to do, and I will probably work at least one of these out. So the first one is to construct a graph representing the distance from the starting position over time of someone who walks, pauses, runs, pauses, turns around, and jump, jogs back. So try to draw a graph like this, and then check it with my sketch. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is make sure time is on the x and distance from start, it's not just total distance traveled, 
This one's from start. Is here. Okay, so when we're talking through each of these parts, the um, someone who walks. So when they're walking, they're probably not walking like as fast as running. So they're going to be increasing, but maybe not a lot. Now it says they pause. So pause, they would not be moving at all. And since this is distance on the left, it would be a flat line. Okay, now they run. So this part of the graph should be a lot steeper than the walk because they usually go faster when they run. Okay, and then they pause. So again, they're going to be flat for a little while. And then they turn around and jog back. So they're going to be getting closer to the start again. And what's important if they're jogging, that should be in between the paces of their running and walking. So that line shouldn't be as steep as the running, but it shouldn't be as flat as the walking. So something like that would be a good interpretation of number one. Okay. All right. And then if we can look at number two for a moment. So you're going to construct a graph representing one speed while getting off a ski lift, skiing down a hill, and then stopping at the bottom of the hill. So if you're thinking about this, this is not a distance time graph. We're going to compare time to speed. When someone first gets off a ski lift, they like they might just pause or they might not be going fast at all. As they get going, they get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, but now they're up the skiing down a hill. And usually, so now at the bottom, they get, they're getting pretty fast, but they might start to slow down just a little bit near the bottom, and then they will probably very quickly come to a complete stop. So you might have something like that in virtually something similar to that. Okay, so your task is just going to be being able to relate a graph to a real life scenario, what might really be happening. Hopefully we'll get to do some experimentation in class and then you'll come up with nice creative stuff.